Hello, I'm Ravinda Bogle and I am a chef and the owner of Giacconi Restaurant in Marylebone where we are today and I'm delighted to be cooking two recipes out of my new book Giacconi Proudly Inauthentic Recipes from an Immigrant Kitchen. I'll be making a cult classic from our menu, the prawn toast scotch egg with banana ketchup. This is, I think, the most favorite dish here at Giacconi. We send one to almost every single table and I haven't been able to take it off the menu since I put it on. The wonderful thing about the Ponto Scotch Egg is that it is the love child of two perennial favorites, the prawn toast, the Chinese prawn toast, and a British Scotch egg. And when you bring them together, you're actually creating something that we think is better than the sum of its parts. So I've got my ingredients ready here. I've got some quail eggs, which I have boiled, and you have to be very exact here. It's two minutes, 15 seconds exactly for that golden runny yolk that you, you kind of strive for. So as soon as they're boiled, you put them in ice cold water to stop the cooking process so that yolk remains uh, nice and runny. And then I've got ginger, garlic, some chili flakes just for a little bit of heat, some lovely aromatic sesame oil, a bit of soy, a light soy sauce just for some seasoning, um, a tiny bit of sugar because that's just nice. It just, it just enhances the sweetness of the prawns. And then I've got prawns here. So they're raw prawns. And what you have to do is you have to make sure that they are super, super dry. So really pat them down with kitchen towel, make sure they're dry. Uh, you can either chop them up really fine or I have just put them through a blender, but just make sure you don't puree them too much. They should be nice and sticky. So simple, I'm just gonna go in with everything, a little bit of everything. So garlic, Um, a little bit more. If you like more of this, less of that, it's absolutely fine. The recipe is not going to fall down because of that. Uh, ginger, I like plenty of ginger. A uh, bit of chili flakes, nice little bit of heat. These are quite hot ones, so I'm going to go easy. Some sesame oil, tiny bit of um, sugar and uh, some soy just for the seasoning. So I'm not putting salt in because the soy sauce is already salty enough. And then I've got some spring onions, which I'm just gonna slice up. And I'm gonna go quite far down the green because the green parts is where all the delicious flavor is. Those are gonna go straight into the prawns. Okay. Nice and simple. None of these ingredients are difficult to find. You can see that they're all quite basic store cupboard things apart from the prawns. Give that a good mix. It does smell really good right now because of that delicious sesame oil. This just came about this recipe because I love a scotch egg and I I don't always like um, just plain pork ones. I've always thought, well, what's a new way to do a classic? And that's kind of what we do here at Giacconi. We kind of reinvent things, rethink things, um, blend borders. We kind of cook without borders here. So we really love that kind of um, just, yeah, blending cultures and being diverse with the way we cook. Okay. So then that is ready and I'm going to start rolling um, my um, little quail eggs. So I'm just going to grab my tray. So I'm just going to take a ball that's slightly bigger than the actual quail egg and I'm just going to pat it down on my hand and try and make it sort of nice and even when you spread it out because you want it to be lovely and even around the egg and then take a little egg that goes in the center, close it all up around, and just roll it in. And the idea is you kind of want to blanket the, uh, the egg with that lovely prawn mixture. So you've just got a nice ball covering it all. Okay, and once those are done, they just need to go in the fridge to chill and set before you panne them or breadcrumb them. And in the meantime, I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm gonna make the banana ketchup that's served alongside. 
Okay, so I'm going to chop up an, a red onion. This is actually quite a big one, so I might only do half. And I'm just going to fry that off in a little bit of oil I've got heating here, so that goes straight in. Just a sunflower oil or a groundnut oil. And I'm not doing this at a really high heat. What I'm looking for here is a real deep caramel sweetness from the onions. So just take your time with this because this really will affect the flavor of your ketchup. You let them caramelize properly, then it's just going to be much, much more delicious. So while those are frying, I'm just going to chop up a chili. And I like using the long red chilies rather than a bird's eye. I just don't want too much heat. The heat from, uh, for this ketchup is actually going to come more from the spices, which I will talk you through. But I am keeping all the seeds here. Just a nice rough chop. Give these a nice stir. I prefer to use red onion here because it just is slightly sweeter than a regular yellow onion. And now it's time to add some ginger and some garlic. So I've just blitzed the ginger and the garlic's going in too. And of course the lovely red chopped chili. And now you can really smell it coming together. So now you've got fragrant things. You've got ginger, you've got garlic, you've got sweet heat of red chili. And as those cook out, and you can see because they'll start sticking to the pan slightly, you're going to go in with your spices. So I've got all spice here. I'm going to go in with a bit of a teaspoonful. That's probably all of that, actually. Lovely kind of aromatic on the nose. The sweetness of cinnamon. And then I have got some lovely Madras curry powder, which kind of went everywhere from the Caribbean to Japan to um, India, anywhere the British colonized, it went with them. Um, so lovely curry powder, and that's going to give it a lovely kind of redolent um, nose and, and, and heat. Wait for them to fill your nose and fill your kitchen with fragrance. And once they do that, then you're ready for the liquid part. And that is some very ripe bananas, which I have just pureed in a blender. So those are going to go in. All of that. And I'm going to help them along with some sweetness, and I'm using dark um, molasses sugar here, about a couple of, two or three teaspoons. And then I'm going in with some sharpness, so I want to give it a little bit of acidity, so I've got apple cider vinegar, so that's going in. And then, um, so some sav a savory note, so I'm not going to use sea salt, I'm actually going to use a little bit of soy sauce. And that'll go in. And that's all really there is to it. I think it's a wonderful way to use up any leftover bananas or any that are going too ripe when you don't want to make uh, a banana cake. So I'm just going to let this now merrily bubble away. And in the meantime, I'm going to get on with bread crumbing or panning my prawn to scotch eggs so that they're ready to fry. OK, so my eggs are just out of the fridge now, and I'm ready to pan them into the flour, egg.
and into the lovely crumb. Just give it a nice shape. And that's that. All breadcrumbed, all ready for the fryer. I've got some oil in here that's uh, heated to about 180 degrees, but actually what you want to do is heat up your oil till it's quite hot and then turn the temperature down to medium if you're doing it in a wok at home. And I'm just gonna lower these carefully. In fact, I'll put, pop them in my basket and then lower them in. And I'm gonna cook them for about two minutes, first in the fryer, and then I'm gonna pop them into the oven for another two minutes. And the reason I do that is I want the yolk in the middle to be runny but warm. Sometimes if you just fry them, um, if you fry them for too long, the yolk's gonna get uh, dry um, and set. Um, but yeah, I just want the uh, yolk nice and warm. Right, so here they, they are. You can see they're lovely and golden brown, which is exactly how I want them, nice and crispy. Beautiful. And in the meantime, you can see that the banana ketchup now is lovely and thick and ketchup-like. And it's ready to all start serving. So the eggs are out of the oven and I'm just going to slice them. There you go. Should be lovely and runny on the inside. Oh, that's Perfect. And I'm just going to garnish with a little bit of sesame seeds. I like mixing white and black just for colour. I don't know anyone who doesn't love a, a scotch egg, but these ones are particularly special. My Pronto scotch eggs with banana ketchup. <laughs> 